What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again with our Multiplying Decimals video playlist, video number three. Today, we're going to be talking about multiplying decimals using models. Let's dive right in. So our objective today, today I will be able to multiply decimals by using area models and number lines, right? Using models to help us solve for products of decimals. So we know multiplication can really be repeated addition, right? And so we're going to use that frame of reference today when we talk about multiplying. Um, and so we're going to estimate first, and then we're going to solve it using repeated addition in our area model. After you estimate, use your area model to help you, right? Um, so I want to round this. I'm going to leave it as four. I'm going to round this actually to a zero because four less you let it rest. So I think my answer shouldn't be an equal sign is going to be about zero. So it should be somewhere around zero. It doesn't have to be exactly zero, but it should be somewhere around zero trying to figure out what is four groups of, so I wrote this down here, right? Because this is one way you can interpret the multiplication sign. I want four groups of two tenths. So I see that my grid, my area model is really not for tenths, it's for hundredths, but I know that two tenths is equal to 20 hundredths. So I want four groups of two tenths. So here's my first group of two tenths, right? So I have these two right here. Okay, that's 20 hundredths. Here's my second group, right, of two tenths, right, another 20 hundredths. Here's my third group, right, of two tenths, and which means I need one more. Here is my fourth group of two tenths, okay? And so I've just done four groups of two tenths, and if I count these up, right, that would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 groups, okay? So I know that my exact answer, if I had four groups of two tenths, that would be eight tenths or 80 hundredths, right? And so I just solved this using an area model. Now, if I have it on a number line, it's the same thing. I've actually lined this number, up line, uh, number line up with the area model so you can visually see each of these, my intervals is worth one tenth. And so if I have four groups of two tenths, I have one, two, three, four, right? And again, this would be one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six, seven, and eight tenths. So if I have four groups of two tenths, I get my answer as eight tenths, which is equivalent to 80 hundredths. So either one of these would be correct. So an eight tenths is actually really close to zero, right? If you have 80 cents, that's pretty close to having no money. And so my estimate was right, which means my answer is reasonable, which is the vocabulary word we talked about in our previous lesson. Let's try another one. So for this one, we only have the area model. We do not have the number line. It's just kind of hard to show 55 hundredths on a number line. So again, we know our multiplication sign. We're choosing to interpret this today as groups of. So we have three groups of 55 hundredths. Um, go ahead and pause the video, and hopefully you have a hundredths grid in front of you. If not, you can quickly draw one, okay, or just keep playing the video and see how we do it. Go ahead and pause the video, shade in your three groups of 5,500, and tell me what you get. So hopefully you just paused it. Now before I start, I want to estimate, and so I'm going to estimate my three as a three. I know that 5,500, if I round to the nearest one, right, five or more, five or more, let it soar. That's going to become a one. So I think my answer is going to be about three. Okay, and so if I have three groups of 55 hundredths, let me go ahead and get my highlighter. And so I'm going to shade in uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. Okay, so that's my first group. Kind of go back and it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to shade in a little bit. Okay, my next group of 55 hundredths, so I'm going to go ahead and do my five right here. Oops, my five right there. And then I have... 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So I have my second group of 55 hundredths right here. And now I need my third group of 55 hundredths. So I have my 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. 
So I clearly see I have my three groups of 5,500. And when I add that together, I know that I had one hole completely shaded in, right? This whole one is shaded in, so that's one hole. And then I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50, Five, oh, sorry, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 60, 500, right? I have six tenths completely shaded in and then my five hundredths. So my exact answer is one in 65 hundredths, right? And so my estimate was about three. That's really not too far off, right? That's only, uh, what, one in 35 hundredths off. So this is a reasonable answer based on my estimate. So my answer is probably correct. If I would have written my decimal in the wrong place and said 16 and 5 tenths, that would not have been reasonable because that's nowhere close to 3, right? If I would have written my um, decimal to the left and said I had 165 thousandths, that's less than 0. Again, not as reasonable as if I put my decimal right in between my 1's place and my 10's place. So this is how you use area models to help you solve for your exact answer after you estimate and then double check it for reasonableness. Let's do one more, okay? And so for this one, we're actually gonna work backwards because sometimes like on a test, it might ask you to write the equation that goes with the area model. So again, we're choosing to think about our multiplication sign as groups of, and so I know that I have four different groups here, right? So my first number is gonna be four. And each group is one tenth or 10 hundredths, same thing. So I have four groups of one tenth, and so, and I know my exact answer is four tenths, right? Oops, make it a little bit neater. There we go. And there we go, okay? And so sometimes you actually have to write the multiplication equation that the area model shows. So here again, I had four equal groups. That's why it's four groups of each group had one tenth. When I multiplied those together, which I can see shaded in, the sum of all these, or the product, right, if you're multiplying instead of adding, is four tenths. So four groups of one tenth equaled four tenths. So this is a great skill to have of being able to work backwards using the area model to write your equation. Hopefully you learned a little bit about how we can multiply using area models and number lines. Please check us out in our other videos at YouTube at our channel, Instructed Beats Official. You can always follow us on Instagram at, at Instructed Beats. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Instructor Beats, out.